So this next uh, little video is going to talk about the reception process. We're going to give you four different types. Um, and the first one we're going to start with is the G protein coupled receptors. All right, so if you look at these pictures, uh, this left one is the, <laughs> the old picture and on the right is um, somebody's nightmare artistic uh, look at. Uh, but anyway, so uh, what I want you to realize is their structure. You can see this is embedded into a membrane. And again, we'll talk about membranes in our, our, our next section. Um, but what you're looking at is a protein, a protein that is, is embedded there. And this protein, remember, we talked about kind of the, the different um, levels of structure. Uh, so this one you're seeing uh, alpha helices, that would be the secondary structure. Uh, what I do want you to know is there's typically seven alpha helixes uh, that set this thing up. Uh, and they are called uh, G protein coupled receptors pretty much because of uh, the way they work, which we'll show you next here on this next slide. So here is kind of a walkthrough step one through four on how this works. And I, and I don't want you to necessarily understand every little nuance that's happening here. But here you have a G protein in, that's inactive, just sitting there. Uh, and you have the G protein coupled receptor on the outside, uh, the protein that, that is actually going through the membrane. So um, what's got to happen is we've got to find a way to activate this thing. Uh, how that is done is with something called GTP, and GTP is guanine uh, triphosphate. Okay, so ADP, we talked about adenine triphosphate. Uh, uh, adenine is the uh, nitrogenous base. This one is using guanine as the uh, nitrogen space. And so anyway, you see GTP going to GDP, which guanine diphosphate, so it's losing a phosphate. But what happens is it activates this G protein. They couple up. And then what you see is it actually then can slide across and activates another enzyme, which then does whatever it needs to do. Um, so again, it kind of acts as an on-off switch. And... Um, you know, you're kind of sliding it to one side, goes on, slide it back, it's off. So um, you can think of this one, and actually the next one we'll talk about is kind of on-off switches. Uh, again, you should know it's coupled with uh, the GTP that runs it. Um, and, and an example of this is how epinephrine is um, sent from one cell to another. So that would be an example of, uh, of how this works. Uh, the second one is actually using uh, receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, tyrosine, again, are proteins. And um, what I want you to know, if you look at the structure here, uh, these uh, are little tiny monomers uh, of protein. And when they're inactive, uh, they just kind of sit there. Uh, you have the ligands come in um, and they attach to the two monomers and they um, come together as a dimer. And you can see uh, uh, the, the one on the right on number two. Now, the problem is it has to be um, activated. And to do that, now you're going to bring in ATP and add a uh, phosphate, basically. You're going to phospholize all of the uh, tyrosines. And then when that happens, it'll allow for relay proteins to come in and attach. And when they attach, then they can do whatever cellular response they're going to do. And, and it doesn't have to be a single response, it can be different responses. Uh, and for example, uh, for this one, growth. Uh, that kicks in uh, uh, to help us grow, obviously. Uh, that would be a good example of um, this type of uh, reception. All right, the third one's a little bit easier, uh, a little bit well more well-known, um, and that's ligand-gated ion channels. Uh, so again, here you have a protein that's embedded in uh, the membrane, and what happens is it's typically closed without a signal, and then a ligand comes in, attaches, and opens up that channel and lets ions um, go through and it causes a cellular response. So this is pretty easy. It's like a closed door. A ligand comes in, opens the door, lets things through. A um, good example of this would be uh, in your neurons, actually uh, a calcium, there's a calcium channel that has to be there and the calcium channel has to uh, open up. Um, and when it opens up, that allows for calcium to go into the neurons, which allows vesicles to um, fuse to the synaptic terminal and allow uh, neurotransmitters to go from one neuron to another. So that would be an example of that one. And then the last one is intracellular receptors. These are ones that actually uh, bypass going through uh, 
I should say bypass. They, they, they have no problems getting through the membrane. Um, all the other ones are on the membrane and the membrane, one of the functions is to select what gets in and what gets out. Uh, it turns out these molecules are uh, not stopped by the phospholipid bilayer. And so they can just go straight on through small um, uh, nonpolar molecules. And, and what happens is they get in very easy and then they attach to a receptor complex inside the cell. And then that can even go right straight directly into the nucleus and then create uh, changes. I will tell you that uh, the example of this would be steroid hormones, uh, estrogen um, and testosterone, uh, aldosterone is another one, uh, are, are um, examples of how this can happen. Okay, so all four of these are basically trying to get um, signals to, to start that pathway. And then next we will we will talk about um, transduction. <laughs>